All right. Uh, the other issues to remind you is uh, because we need to turn on, turn off the resistor, the current. Uh, it means the switch. Through the help of most transistors, you still have uh, to consider the parasitic resistance of the switch. So usually, for this case, from the smallest to the highest, to get the same impact on the resistance, okay? Uh, hopefully, the switch is, is also, for example, doubled for each extra bit because from LSB to MSB, the current for each higher bit, the current is doubled, right? So to reduce the impact of your switch resistance, hopefully the switch is also doubled. So that is what you need to pay enough attention to such kind of detail. And then you can get good enough result. Okay, not only for your simulation, but hopefully after fabrication. Yeah. Anyway, that is what I need to tell you. And then let's go for the other cases. Uh, again, we have such kind of unit current source. Then we might, uh, it is uh, composed of resistor or transistor. Yeah, in this case, again, you can see uh, each unit resistor generate the same unit current, all right? And again, we need the help of such kind of address decoder, yeah, to turn on the exact number of unit current sources to your output according to the input, yeah. The higher input, it means the more current will be turned on to get higher output voltage. That's it, okay? Yeah, again. You can have, uh, you can ensure the so-called uh, uh, monotonicity. Yeah. If you think that is too troublesome, I mean, uh, for eight bits, you need to have two hundred and fifty six current sources. If it is too much for you, how to simplify the structure? Actually, you can go back to such kind of minorly weighted one. For eight bits, you need only have eight uh, current sources, that's it, in theory, all right? So you can see, oh, from MSB, I, and then the next bit divided by two all the way to LSB, yeah. The advantage is, again, is the simple structure, but the disadvantage is uh, you get a lot of impact parasitics, yeah, on such kind of structure. So, yeah, forget about that. Allow me to show you some of the drawback. For example, hmm, you can see that is the uh, uh, MSB of, uh, right now for four-bit case. Okay, what I would like to say is for four-bit, for example, you would like to turn uh, from zero one 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 to one zero zero zero. Okay, for example, yeah, it means what? The LSB, the three LS bits needs to be turned off. At the same time, the MSB bit needs to be turned on. Okay? In theory, all happened simultaneously. You need to turn on at the same time. Uh, I mean, you need to turn on this and turn off all the other bits at the same time. That, uh, that is only in theory. How about in practice? In practice, sorry for that, there is usually some kind of delay. Okay, so for example, if the first, uh, okay, the three bit turns off earlier than the MSB to be turned on. Okay, so what, what's the consequence? Yeah, th that is from, yeah, Zero, one, one, one. So this is seven, and this is eight, right? But sorry, sorry for that. Those three bits will be turned off first, so your output will go down first. But in between, this one is turned on, 
right? So it is pushed up and then, yeah. So you will get a lot of glitch. That is what you need to be very, very careful. Okay? Don't expect. You will have something like, uh, how can I say? Oh, from 7 to 8, 8 to 9. No, 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 no. That is only in theory. But in practice, you need to face many kind of glitch for such kind of transition. Yeah, to turn them on, to turn them off. Is it possible to synchronize all of them? It means to turn on this, to turn off that, blah, blah, blah. Can they beat at the same time? Exactly. No. Yeah. Never mind how hard you try. You can say, hey, according to my TT post simulation, I, made ev I make everything at the same time to be switched on or switched off. Congratulations. But that is only for TT. Okay? And how about the other processes? And again, even, even at TT corner, okay, if you run Monte Carlo simulation, uh, you need to face uh, the so-called random mismatch. Yeah, so any, anyway, anyhow, you try to align the transition at the same time, at TT, at uh, room temperature, <laughs> blah, 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 okay? But the, there are many kind of mismatches you need to face. First of all, how about systematic mismatch? Sorry for that. Till now, all EDA tools cannot provide any simulation according to the systematic mismatch, okay? You can only say, hey, I have a good enough layout pattern to cancel systematic mismatch. Okay, that's it. Face the consequence. Yeah. You have no idea how good your layout pattern will be. No, nobody help you to do any simulation like this. Okay, what you can do is process variation. I mean, TT to FF, uh, SF, blah, blah, blah. And in addition to Monte Carlo simulation for random mismatch, okay? So even you make it all of them at TT at room temperature, but according to Monte Carlo simulation, you still, you will still, yeah, see something happened. I mean, for such kind of misalignment. So never mind how hard you try, I need to warn you. After fabrication, they won't be synchronized. Okay, forget about it. Uh, there is still some kind of mismatch about the switching on and off of all the switches. Okay. Unless you have some, how can I say, uh, some circuit to tune the delay. Okay, congratulations, you can make it. But how to tune it, that is another story. Okay, yeah. So this is the usual case. But luckily enough, we have something called the glitcher. This is glitch, right? We call it glitch, glitch, tufo. How to reduce such kind of glitch? The circuit, we call it the glitcher. OK? Yeah, but how to make it? Hmm. Through the help, for example, sample and hold. Yeah. For each conversion, digital to analog conversion. I told you already, never mind how hard you try, there, there will be some kind of mismatch, some kind of yeah, delay between all those switching. Okay? So we can postpone our result. Right? We can prevent to send our output directly. No. After it is stabilized, then we send the output. Okay? And that is what we can do with sample and hold. Yeah? We sample here and hold it for the output. So to prevent your output world see such kind of transition. Okay, that's it. Alright? Bingo. So after we apply such kind of sample and hold, yeah, in the middle, or even, yeah, because for your clock, usually you have this, right? Maybe for the region age, we do such kind of conversion from digital to analog, but you will see a lot of glitches. So the, in either case, 
is to, sam to sample and hold at foreign age, right? But to make it even, especially for high, very high frequency operation, yeah, it, it, you had a better sample and hold here, sample and hold here, okay? To allow more time for your circuit to be stabilized, for your output to be stabilized, okay? So, we have many kinds of degree and this is, I think, in idea, the most, the, the easiest to understand, okay? Yeah, again, <laughs> let's go back to unit current source because uh, it's really troublesome to have such kind of uh, minorly weighted structure. You have a lot of dirty jobs to deal with. Let's go back to the origin. If, a, if, if you adopt such kind of unit current sources for each time, uh, again, for example, from seven to eight, right? What you can do? What do you need to do? Turn on one more unit current source, that's it. Okay? For the previous one, I told you already, from 0, 1, 1, 1 to 1, 0, 0, 0, you need to turn MSB on and turn off all the LSB, right? That is in the past. But how about right now? You have unit current sources, again, the same thing, right? From here to there, hmm. you simply turn on one more unit current source. So you can guess, the glitch during sensation is much smaller than before, right? Because in, in the past, you need to turn this one on and all the others off. But right now, no. This, this is a MSB. It has more power. Okay, it has more impact on your output. But right now, good enough. We only can extra unit current source. Very small, very very small. Okay, that's it. But but the disadvantage is is uh, you need the help uh, of uh, such kind of uh, how can I say uh, digital circuit. You have more complicated digital circuit than before. And this is what we can help. Yeah. For example, in the past, if you have 8 bits, right? So totally here, you need to have almost 2 to 8 power, yeah, minus 1. That's it. It's really complicated. Then we can reduce the complexity. I think I show similar result. We call it a uh, folded R string. Right, uh, for the Austrian, uh, all the way from the top to the bottom, but we fold it. Uh, 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 uh. You can see the idea is quite similar to each other, but according to patent, this is the new patent. Okay, because they are not exactly they are not exactly the same. In idea, they are similar. Yeah, but in practice, uh, they are not exactly the same, so you can apply for a new patent. Anyway, we call it matrix style. Okay? So, in the past, we view such kind of unit currency, unit current sources. I mean, in theory, it is, it, it is a nine. Okay? The first, the second, the, oh, all the way. Okay, so for more input, we will turn more of those on. That is a nine. And how many current sources to be turned on? That is an idea, okay, for the previous one. But right now, we arrange the current sources in the array. That's it, okay? In the array, it means it becomes from 1D to 2D for such kind of two-dimensional structure. Oh yeah, we have two decoder or encoder as you like. All right, so for the row, yeah, it's select. There are three kind of, just like Zhang, you, you, you wrote the paper, right? You, you can see there is much similarity. For the rows, there are three kinds of operation. 
either you can see ah all the rows are on okay and then in the middle you can see some current sources is on some is off okay and for the final all those are off okay but how to make such kind of decision okay let's let's go from the very beginning again if the input is zero uh, nobody will be turned on right but if the input is one you will turn on this two three four five oh 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 ah. the first row is already on fully on so how about the next you need to turn on this right and again until the all the current source in the row is on then go to the next okay yeah so what do i mean is according to msv for example right now i show you this from the beginning if this is zero uh, is the input uh, zero then how many how many current sources in the first row depend on it depends on lsb right if lsb says zero oh so nobody will be turned on if it is zero zero one then this one next this one and finally all of them are on. all of them are all of them are on it means what I mean, if you have one, 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 and how about the next? It will become zero, 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 right? But the MSB will be increased by one. Jin Wei, you have such kind of carry bit after one, one, one. How about the next? The bit will be, you will send send the carry signal to increase the row by one, okay? And then it will. Re reset to zero all right that's it so after that you get what zero zero one it means this is one <laughs> and all the others are zero okay yeah so and how about the next you have zero zero one oh okay this one please pay attention to this from the beginning, if you have zero, 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 you have zero here, right? But right now, after yeah, a carry signal from the uh, column decoder to row decoder, yeah, you get one here, one there, okay? So right now, you have one, zero, zero, zero. And again, how many will be turned on for the first row, uh, for the second row? Again, depends on the value here, okay? If it is zero zero one, oh hey, zero one zero, oh oh oh, all the way. When it's fully on, and then how how about the next? Oh, you send the carry uh, to make it become zero one zero, right? So you have one one, and all those are fully on. Okay, then focus on the third row. So. The output of your LSB decoder will be applied to the boundary of zeros and ones. Okay, got it? Okay? That is the idea. Yeah, hopefully you you understand what I'm talking about. If not, go back to reread your slides or uh, to rewatch the video clips. Okay. Anyway, for this example, right now we have hmm, zero one zero. Yeah, for your MSB, and uh, uh, for the LSB, actually that is zero one one. Okay, zero one zero means two. So you have one one and zero 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 uh, for your row decoder. Okay, and for your LSB, uh, zero one one, right? Three, right? So it means. Uh -huh. one 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 and all the others are zero okay so according to the observation i explained 
the LSB output, decoder output, will be only applied to the boundary of zero and ones. Here, the boundary, I'm zero, you're one. Oh, okay. I will pass the control. I'm the first zero. To the top, they are all ones. Okay? So, for the first zero, it will pass the control of its own row to LSB. Okay? How about the other zeros? All those will be turned off. Only the first zero, beside ones, it will pass its own row, the control of its own row to LSB decoder. Okay? Okay? And how about all the ones? Ah, as I told you, the rows are fully turned on. So it pays the control to the next. Okay, so you can see all of them are on. Okay, that's it. Very simple idea. Okay, got it? So how can you detect the boundary between 0 and 1? Mm. Piece of cake, just like this. See? If I'm zero, right? Then these are from LHB decoder. The signal will be passed to turn the current source on or off. All right? But the condition is what? I'm zero, but <laughs> to my top, it should be one. Okay, so you can see, if my top neighbor is one, and I am zero, ah, you can see the on off of the column decoder this one will be passed to the output to turn it on. Uh, because that is the positive output and this is the negative output. Okay? To turn it on, uh, it should be 1 and this should be 0 to turn on the current source. Okay? That's it. So if you see, on the contrary, hey, for example, 1, 1, 0, right? Yeah, if I'm 1 and my mm, previous neighbor is still one. Oh, so no worries. I am one, you are one. So the output is one, right? Okay? So uh, you, you, you will get... Uh, so, so, yeah, 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 so, so, sorry. The output is not one. Because this is named. Okay? If I am one, you are also one. So the output will be zero and here will be one. Configurations. One here to ten and zero there for negative output, right? So you will turn on the current source. All those rows, all those current sources in the same row will be turned on. Okay, that's it. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I would like to tell you that because uh, for the detection between 0 and 1, we need to input. And how about the first row? It has no previous row, right? So, by definition, is previous row, the virtual row should be one. Okay? That's it. Then you can apply the same, the, 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 the same circuit to detect the boundary. So, for the very beginning, uh, if I am zero, all zeros, then you have zero, zero for the output. Uh, but by default, this is one, right? That is the boundary. Then the control of the current source of the current sources in the first row will be passed to your LSB decoder. That's it. Okay? That is what I can help. Hopefully you get the overall idea. So we are in a dilemma. Hmm. To simplify the overall circuit. We can apply manually weighted structure, but uh, you will face a lot of problems, just like a very huge glitch. Uh, prob and also, it is almost impossible to secure monotonicity, right? 
for full manually weighted structure. Then we go for current sources. You need current sources, just like this one. Oh, we can apply again uh, such kind of uh, matrix style decoder, blah, blah, blah. But it's still really complicated. OK? And again, I, oh, I need to warn you. I need to warn you. Yeah. You say, oh, this is by, uh, in theory, oh, this is the first. I usually count it as zero. OK, but anyway. Uh, OK. Uh, zero, one, two, three, blah, 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 all the way. Right? Right? That is only in theory. In practice, I warn you already. If I am zero, and what is the next? For your layout, for your real layout, you can say, oh, I'm zero, and you are one. No, 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 no. That is really stupid. Yeah. According to my uh, explanation in the background for data converters, I told you already, you need to break down, you need to break all the relationship between your labels. So you had better scatter all of them around. So that is only in theory, but in practice, if I am zero here, and where are my neighbors? One, two, three, four, five. You need to scatter all of them around your layout pattern. Okay? You must to all the neighbors. If you go to this number, you will die. If my neighbors are higher, my neighbors are higher. 你的邻居应该也会偏大 ，according to systematic mismatch, it is really, really bad. So for real layout, it will become very complicated. Okay, that is the price you need to pay for it. So even though, in theory, it can provide you much better performance, but in practice, it's really hard to implement. According to layout, it's really hard. If you, even though you make it for such kind of very complicated layout, you need to pay parasitics. The parasitics between such kind of very, very complicated layout, you need to be very careful. The parasitic capacitance, the parasitic resistance should be much higher than minor, minorly weighted structure. Okay? So that is some kind of dilemma, kunjing. Okay? For manually weighted, the structure is quite simple with much less parasitics. But you, you need to face a lot of glitches, uh, blah, blah, blah. All right? And you cannot secure such kind of monotonicity. On the contrary, for you need current sources. Ah, you can secure monotonicity. You have a lot of benefits, but for implementation, it is really hard. Okay? So, what, what, what's next? Again, you can hybrid both of them. Okay? So, we call it, this is some kind of segmented, segmented structure. It means for MSB and LSB, you can apply different structures. But don't apply in the wrong way. OK? MSB, again, is much more important than LSB. So you need to apply what? You need current sources. OK? Because minorly weighted structure, actually, uh, it's really hard to keep your INL. OK? So it can only, for accuracy, Minorly weighted structure, it is too simple to be good. So it can be only applied to your LSB instead of MSB. Never make any kind of mistake. Intuitively, many of the new students, new engineers, they will say, oh, MSB in minorly weighted and LSB not so important. In, you need a current source. Totally wrong. Okay? You need a current source can provide you, in theory, better accuracy. Okay, so it needs to be applied to your MSB. All right? And MSB, uh, uh, it needs to apply for your MSB. And LSB is not so important, so we can apply such kind of manually weighted structure. And then we have such kind of 
segmented structure. Okay, this is for your reference. For example, this is a 13 bit stack. For the 10 bits, they apply such kind of unit current source array or matrix as you like. Yeah, two dimensional one. And how about the three LSV bits? Ah, we divide. Because each one here, they are one, 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 one. All of them are one, right? So for the LSB, we divide it by two, by four, by eight. Other configurations, we adopt such kind of weighted current source. Easier for you to implement the overall certain bit, okay? Yeah, and how to do such kind of switching? Again, uh, we don't waste anything, okay? So uh, for each one, never mind, manually weighted or uh, uh, you need current source structure to the right for positive output, to the left for negative output to provide a fully differential output voltage. And then uh, I need to warn you for real design, for real operation, yeah, especially for low voltage operation, uh, there will be some problem with that kind of switching on and off. This is what I would like to say. Yeah, for example, that is the usual case for new engineers to design. Okay, we have to turn, uh, 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 be careful right now. This is a PMOS instead of MOS, okay? So how to turn it on? The control voltage needs to be needs to change from one to zero. Zero means on for PMOS. Okay? And how to turn it off from zero to one? Well, very easy to understand. But the problem is for low supply voltage operation. Okay? It means how to turn it on? Because you, you have VTH. For example, if VTH is so large, you can only turn on here. Okay? You can only turn on in this period. So let's have a closer look at such kind of operation. If I zoom it here. In theory, we hop in the middle on and off, that is the threshold voltage. If I turn this one from off to on here, and you turn, you turn this, the other one, from off to on in the middle, oh, they switch the position, bingo. That is really good. But in practice, again, according to process variation, blah, 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 it won't happen. It won't happen in the middle, okay? So, especially for low voltage operation. Yeah, you can see the threshold is here. <laughs> so, you can see, look, when the first one from on to off, here it is already off. Okay? At this point, it is already off. But certainly enough, for the other one, it's still off. You need to wait until this time. It will be turned on. Okay, so in between this point and that point, both current source are off. All right? And what will be harmful? This switch to the left, that switch to the right, Right now, both are off, but for the current source, I told you already, it would like to be on. We never turn it off. Hopefully, you never turn it off. Otherwise, to turn such kind of current source on, it takes a much longer time. Okay, but anyway, you have bias voltage, you have bias voltage here, the current can still flow. You will say, hey, Right now, both are cut off, right? So, where can the current flow to charge the parasitic capacitance? 
Okay? So in this way, the node voltage here, you can see you have a charge to be very high. It is harmful because after you turn the other one really from off to on, such kind of voltage peak will show up to your real output. It is really, really harmful. Okay, so we hate such kind of peaks. How can you reduce it? Huh? Very easy. Again, what is the problem right now for real design? During the transition, we really afraid of that both will be off. So the solution is to delay turn off. Okay, B because in theory, to turn it on, right, and to turn it off, right, it need to have in they need to happen at the same time. But as I explained, it is more likely to cut both off. Okay, so the solution again, please listen to that, is you need to wait until. I am the one to be off, right? But I need to wait. Wait until what? Until the other guy turn on. Got it? Got it? So we need to postpone the process for turning off. That's it. Okay? Who turns off the PMOS current source <laughs> from zero? to high. That is for turning off. We need to postpone it. Until what? Until it turns on. Already, then I off. Okay? That's it. So, for your real design, I hope you pay attention to such kind of detail. The PMOS switch needs to be less conductive than your MOS. That it? That it? How to pull it on? By PMOS. How to turn it down? By MOS. Okay? So usually for new designers, uh, they will try to match the conductance of this one to that one. So they will meet in the middle. Sorry for that. No. Right now, you had better postpone this to make it less conductive. In the past, we know the width, the aspect ratio for PMOS, usually to balance the conductance, the width over length will be 2.5 to 3 times larger for PMOS than MOS, right? Right? But right now, that is not the case. Don't do it. Because we need to postpone this one, the, the turning off process. Okay, so you need to make this one a little bit less conductive. It means less than 2.5 to 3. No, 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 no. Not so huge. Okay, so the resistance is larger for PMOS than MOS. So the slope will become blah, blah, blah. That's it. Okay, you, you can make the output less troublesome with less, spike, less spikes than before. Okay? So the other possibility is to delay it by another inverter. That is possible to delay it, okay? Because the control signal usually is for MOS. And how to apply your signal to to PMOS? You need to in, you need to reverse it. So the inverter to reverse the signal can help you to get such kind of delay. Similarly, okay. Yeah, because this is the turning off process for your PMOS current, okay? You can make it to reduce the glitch, output glitch, okay? And then, uh, uncorrelation is really important. If the current source is from the beginning, zero, one, two, three, blah, 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 if all of them are uncorrelated according to our statistics, the more current sources 
involved in your operation, the beta result you can get. That is for MSB array, okay, instead for your LSB, okay? Anyway, anyhow, that is from the theory. Yeah, the more current, you need current sources, the better output for the linearity. But you need to promise me, all those you need current sources needs to be uncorrelated. But how? Again, for real layout, yeah, you need to scatter all of them. Okay, you, you cannot put a zero, one, two, three, four. No, 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 no. That is really stupid. Okay, and then you can see the more bit, the higher requirement for such kind of SFDR, SNDR. Okay, anyway, yeah. And how to calculate it? It's really complicated. So I, I only show the result. Okay. The, according to your spectrum, that is your sine wave, and for all the other harmonics, blah, 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 okay. The more bit, according to our background, uh, chapter 6-1, right? I told you already. Yeah, the more bit means uh, the more difference between your fundamental harmonic, uh, the fundamental uh, frequency and all your harmonics. Yeah, the higher bit, the more demand, okay? Anyway, for very high resolution case, how to make your INL as small as required is really hard. So we can do the so-called linearization technique. Linearization means what? Okay. According to INL, I told you already, that is the ideal case. But after fabrication, oh, you get something like this. Oh, really bad. The difference between the ideal linear line and your real curve, that is the definition for INL. How to reduce the INL? You need to make your output curve as linear as close to the linear ideal curve as possible, right? So we call the process linearization to push your output curve back to linear one. We call it linearization. First of all, we can do trimming, okay? For example, for minorly weighted structure from one to two to four to eight, Okay, about it. After fabrication, maybe this is uh, 8.5, this is 3.8. Ah, okay, everything will, will go wrong. Nothing will be perfect. So you can do such kind of trimming to push back 8 point something back to 8. 3.8 back to 4, okay? That is the process for trimming. To make your output as linear as possible, we call it linearization, okay? But trimming actually in the past, we apply. However, it's too expensive. Nowadays, very few focus on such kind of trimming. All right? And then we can have analog calibration. Later, I will explain. Yeah, we have that. Yeah, maybe some of them is still, uh, how can I say, uh, is still applied nowadays, yeah, but not so much. All right? And the other one is have very good layout techniques. I will also explain later, okay? Yeah, it is possible, but really complicated, yeah? And then, finally, with such, ki such kind of self-trimming, I mean, yeah, you embed such kind of trimming circuit on your own circuit. That is the, right, nowadays I think that is the best way for you. But usually, you, it requires a lot of extra circuit, especially, a lot of digital circuit to help. So again, that is the so-called digitally assisted analog circuit. That is the mainstream research. Okay, this is the Okay, how to do analog Calibration. Ah, 
tens of years ago, some smart guy have such kind of hmm? current copy in structure. You copy your reference current to all the other unit current source. Okay? So what is the idea? I mean for MSB. Okay? MSB with unit current sources. But unluckily enough, after fabrication, everything will go wrong. Nothing will be exactly the same as you like. All right? So I don't care. After fabrication, forget about it. Yeah. Let it be. <laughs> and then we do calibration through one reference current. OK? Only one. Only one. OK? So we would like to copy the reference current to all the unit current sources to make all, all of them are exactly the same as this one. All right? That is the key idea. But how to do such kind of current copy in? How to copy the current from I reference to any of your unit current source? Allow me to show you this. Bingo. Very simple idea. OK? Very simple, very easy to understand. For calibration, each of the unit current source for calibration needs to be connected to your I reference. So if you are MOS, the reference current needs to be PMOS. On the contrary. OK? So during calibration, you just close the switch uh -huh, to make yourself exactly the same as the I reference. But why? How? OK. Now let me to tell you this. Uh, for example, from the beginning, the current is too small. And then according to KCL, huh? I reference is larger than me, right? What's the consequence? The extra current will flow through here to charge the capacitor. For what? To increase the gate voltage. Okay? Since the gate voltage will be increased, what's the consequence? I myself, my gate voltage is increased so I can conduct more current. Bingo? That's it? Right? Until what? Until my current is exactly the same as the reference. Right? If I in yeah, yeah, yeah. after increase my gate voltage, my current is, is increased until me and you are exactly the same. And again, according to KCL, since my current is exactly the same as yours, it means what? No current will flow in this way. Bingo! It means what? The voltage here will be stabilized. No change at all. Okay? On the contrary, if you say, hey, from the beginning, oh, sorry. Hey, my current is larger than you. According to KCL, my current is larger. How can I, how, what I can do? I need to get extra current from here, right? That's it. Congratulations. So if you get extra current from your capacitor, it means what? The gate voltage will be reduced. Until when? Again, until my current is the same as you. That's it. Bingo. So after some time, my current will be exactly the same as the reference current. And then, You can go for real operation. It means cut it off. And then you connect your output to real output. You, you connect uh, your current source to real output. That's it. OK? All right. And let's go back to the original structure. Ah. The I reference is used to calibrate the first, the second, all the way. 
for your MSV. I don't care how many bits. For example, if your MSV has 10 bits, okay, it means totally needs to be calibrated. And after that, in theory, everybody, all the current sources will be exactly the same, right? It means what? We can live happily since after. Is it? Is it? No. Why not? Huh. Please go back. Go next. Accru according to leakage. <laughs> after calibration, you get the correct voltage. But at the same time, according to leakage, the voltage will be changed. Okay? So, it's really upset. Such calibration needs to do continuously. You calibrate the first to the end, then back to the first. It means what? Any time, at any time, there will, be, there will be at least one of the current sources be calibrated. <laughs> okay? So for your output, oh, you will let, there will always less than one, right? So how many current sources you need to have? I, I show you, right? Sorry, one extra, okay? You need to have one dummy current sources for what? Because for the main unit current source, at least one will be calibrated. So the dummy one needs to take the position to replace the calibrated one. And also the dummy, the dummy current source still needs to be calibrated by I reference. So totally, all of them needs to be calibrated by I reference continuously. Okay? And it will slow down the operation. Yeah, it means the calibration needs to be done in background. Okay? Yeah. 他们必须在背景做校正。这样会拖累你的那个速度 That's it, nothing is free Okay, you need to pay for it But it's a really brilliant idea Very good idea Let's go for extra detail Maybe in the future you, you, you will design something You, okay, follow this <laughs> Maybe, maybe for your MSB And then for our LSB, our manual weighted blah 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 Okay, anyway I need to warn you that that is totally correct in theory, but in practice, no. Why? Because, because you need to turn on and off such kind of switch. Turn it on, turn it off, right? According to, let me just show you. Okay, two kind of issue you need to deal with. Charge injection and clock fit through. Did I tell something like this? Already or not? To turn off the switch, that is really harmful. Yeah, to turn on, how to turn it on? Because for the switch, it is off from the beginning. How to turn it on? You need to apply high enough, uh, for MOS, high, high enough uh, voltage to the gate to attract a lot of electrons to make the switch conductive. On the contrary, how to turn it off? Uh oh. You need to push all the electrons you attracted. You need to push them away. Right? So, during such kind of pushing away process, some of the electrons will be pushed to here. It's really harmful. Right? Right? During 10, after turning on to be calibrated by I reference, Oh, the voltage is perfect to conduct exactly current with this. But after turning off, some electrons of your switch will be pushed into your 
gate capacitor. But because they are electrons, so the gate voltage will be lowered than the ideal value. Wow! Not only for charge injection, but also click, uh, clock free through uh, with the same impact. So what is the solution to? First of all, please look at this. We wouldn't like all the unique current sources to be calibrated. That's too much. For example, 90% of the unique current source is fixed. Only 10% to be calibrated. Huh? Got it? So you can reduce the impact of turning on, turning off, especially turning off, okay, of the switches. Got it? So for unit current source, again, I need to highlight that. It is composed by two. The major portion is always on. I mean, not calibrated. And only a few percent, 10 percent or 20 percent, will be calibrated by your reference current to reduce the impact of charge injection, clock breakthrough. But even by this, the second solution, we need to two solutions. Okay, this is the first solution. It's not enough. Then the second solution is we need to have dummy switch for this one. Okay? So what, what do I mean? Allow me to zoom in here. That is the switch here, right? And then to your gate capacitor, right? You need to have another dummy switch here. Okay? The control signal. The dummy switch means what? It never really turned on or off anything. No. Okay? You, you can see. The dummy switch here both, the, 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 that is the real switch. So the source and the drain, one to the input, the other one to the output. But for the dummy switch, you can see the input and output are exactly the same. Okay? Both input and output, both source and drain are connected to this line, to the output capacitor. Okay? So what is the idea? When it is turned off, some of the electrons will be pushed in this direction. Push back, no worries. It is not harmful. But push to the capacitor, it is harmful. Okay? What you can do is to turn on the dummy switch. To turn it on, again, it needs to attract a lot of electrons. Right? That's it. Got it? You speed some electrons, then I help you to <laughs> absorb. Hopefully, all the electrons you push out, I help you to absorb. Okay? So that is the function of the dummy switch. It can help you to reduce the impact of both. I mean, I mean, charge injection and clock fish through. That's it. All right? And what is clock fish through? Oh, I have no time to explain. Just Google online by yourself. Okay? And dummy switch is the key solution. Alright? But we guess, we guess, 50% of the charges will go this direction. 50% will be pushed back. Okay? So, so that is only yes. So how about the size of your dummy switch? 50% of your main switch. Got it? Got it? It means the W over L, usually the W is divided by 2 from your main switch. Okay? But what is the problem? In theory, oh, really good. But right now, the only problem is, I promise you, instead of 50%, the real operation, I promise you, is not 50%. Okay? Fifty percent of the charges will push to the output. That is only our guess. But for practical situation, forget about it. It never be exactly fifty percent. Oh, it's really upset. <laughs> okay? That is the ugly truth for analog IC designers to face. Anyway, 
better than not, yeah, you have 50% of the dummy streets here, congratulations. Yeah, I need, to, I need to say that how much percent of the charges will be pushed to the output, it depends on your operation condition. Sometimes your voltage is higher, sometimes the voltage is lower, then uh, how much will be pushed to the output, it depends. It varies a lot. Okay, that's it. That is, yeah. But I guess for such kind of unit current sources, their operation condition will be similar to each other. I mean, from the first to the rest. So, yeah, you, during your post simulation, maybe you will see how much percentage. Okay? So, my recommendation is to fine tune the dummy switch for your gate capacitor. You can fine tune it during your post simulation. Okay, bingo, that's it. Okay, just do your very best. Because the output voltage will be always stabilized. Okay, but again, that is only for your post simulation. After fabrication, I guess you still get some kind of variation, but not too much. Okay, that's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah, and the other one is uh, the so called threshold voltage compensation. Oh, uh, to my memory, the paper is from National Jiaohong University. Okay, yeah, what is the problem? Because, for you, uh, so, sorry, right now we have a most current source. <laughs> and for the previous one, oh, yeah, 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 this is, all, uh, this is still a most, but uh, for the others, uh, this is PMOS. Anyway, anyhow, let's look at, it, look at this. For unit current source, we need to apply bias voltage or bias voltages, it depends on uh, you have simple current source or you have case code. Yeah, case code current source is better. It's better, but yeah, yeah, it, 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 it take, it needs higher operation voltage. Okay, anyway, anyhow. What is the problem? I told you again and again on the same chip, we have the so-called bias network to generate the bias and then for all the others, okay? And the problem is, if you are here, here, or there, according to systematic mismatch, okay, the threshold voltage will not be exactly the same. Oh, it's really upset. You can see according to saturation situation, yeah, my current depends on this. But sorry for that, you have the same bias voltage, but not the, the, not the same bias voltage, okay? So the output current will be totally different. And this is a very crazy but uh, innovative idea. You can see, I don't deliver the bias voltage directly, no. I deliver here, and then through the help of compensation transistor, local compensation transistor. Local means what? MC is really close to M5. Again, again, yeah. I have my own M5 here, and beside it, we have MC. I have M5 here, MC, M5 here, MC, okay? It means the compensation transistor is local Kate exactly beside your M5 for each current source. It means what? Even there is any kind of systematic mismatch, but I'm close to you, so my threshold voltage should be very close to yours. That's it. Okay? So you can see that. National Jiao Tong University, uh, some of the professors, students, uh, they deliver this voltage. And then the real gate voltage actually through the help of MC, uh, you, 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 so you, you suppose you know that already, you get one VTS plus delta V, right? So you get this, this. Delta V 
plus VTHC. C means MC, the threshold voltage for MC. Okay? Ah, bingo. VTH for M5. But, but, but because they are side by side, so they can almost cancel each other. It means what? The output current will be stabilized. Okay? Yeah. And yeah, for the others, uh, how, how to do such kind of switching? Yeah, as you like, you can, if you have time, you can read it. Oh, very complicated one. Yeah, anyway. Okay? Yeah. Then, what I skipped actually is uh, for layout. I mentioned already in my uh, class in previous semester or in next semester, okay? Because I have too much to teach you. So I need to skip such kind of uh, complicated layout structure. Then for cyclic deck, oh, it's really important. Cyclic deck, what you can do? That is the smallest one, okay? That is the deck with smallest area, but nothing is free. The accuracy is the worst, okay? But sometimes for not so high resolution, not so, for example, you have some kind of, elect uh, in the past, electronic, uh, electronic chicken, right? It doesn't need any kind of luxury deck. Yeah, uh, for, for the sound of the electronic chicken, goo -goo -goo or anything, oh, who cares what? Yeah, not so important. Only if it has some sound to please the kid. Good enough. It never be true for real chicken. Nobody will care. Okay? So for such kind of case, cyclic deck can help us reduce the overall cost very much because it is the simplest, it is the smallest, okay, but it's the worst <laughs> accuracy. Okay, what is the operation principle? Yeah. You can see it needs n cycles to do such kind of n bit conversion. LSB first. Okay? So, what is the operation principle? Oh, very easy to understand through my teaching. Okay? For example, if D0 is 1, what means what? Uh, it will be connected to V reference. If it is zero, then it will be connected to the ground. Okay? To the ground means what? No impact to your output. Okay? Only if it is one, then uh, V reference will be connected, right? And then for each operation, you can see the output voltage here will be divided by two. Okay? Got it? So for the first cycle, D0 connected V reference. Oh, congratulations, you get V reference here. But what is the output? It is divided by two. So you get V reference by two. But this is for the first cycle. And how about the next cycle? Okay. Right now, I would like to tell you, we according to superposition principle, 重叠原理, we only need to consider the impact of each bit, then sum all of them up to your final result, that's it. So let's focus on this bit only, okay? So what is the impact of D0 only? We have one and all the others are zero. So for the first bit, it is shift, it is one V reference, I told you V reference here, then, okay, V reference by two. But that is for the first cycle. And how about the second cycle all the way to the final? Because they are all zeros, they are all grounded. Okay? No extra input, only yourself. Be circulate again and again and again. For each cycle, it will be sample. For next cycle, divided by two, sample here, right? So how about the output? It will be divided by another two. So you get four. For each cycle, the voltage here will be divided by another two, another two, another two. Whoa. So finally, for n bits operation, the impact of D0 will become, okay? That is for D0. 
Mm -hmm. It takes n cycles. But you ask, how about D1? Ah. 0, 1, 0, 0. So for the first 0, nothing. 0 here, 0 there, 0 output. Nobody cares. When D1 shift in, ah, congratulations, you have re-reference connected to the output. Oh, so you get V reference by 2 for your output, right? And for the rest, one cycle again, it will be divided by an extra 2. But what is the difference between D0 and D1? D1 operates one cycle less than D0, right? So I told you already for D0 it is, so how about for D1? How about D2? How about D3? Oh, congratulations, that's it. And according to superposition principle, we sum them up. Oh, that is what you have. Got it. Okay? And then, what is the problem of this? Two major problems. First of all, you need to be very careful because if all of them are one, as you can guess, the output should be very close to re-reference, right? For any kind of deck, they have the same situation. But VA is divided by 2 to become your V out. On the contrary, VA is multiplied <laughs> from your V out by 2. So if you have V reference here, then VA should be very close to this. Okay? You must be very careful. It means what? All those circuits connected to VA, the output of sample and hold, and the input of your divided by two, needs to tolerate two times higher voltage. Sometimes you need to apply hmm, thick modes. Okay? To tolerate higher voltage. But this is not the major problem. The major problem is what? It will not be divided by exactly two after fabrication. Okay? Maybe it will be divided by 2.1 or by 1.9. I don't care. And the error for sample and hole, the error for the summer, the adder, Java Qi, will be exactly the same for each cycle. So it means what? The error will be accumulated. Got it? For all the bits, you get the same error. <laughs> so if it is larger than one, uh, you will get a very terrible gain error or something. Okay, blah, blah, blah. And sample and hold, offset, all the same. That is the major situation, the major problem for cyclic deck. Again, for each cycle, you face the same problem, the same error. The error will become more and more and more. Error accumulation. How to reduce it? Ah, oh, piece of cake. Pipe and knife. We don't reuse. Okay? We don't reuse. From D0 all the way to, from LSB all the way to MSB. In, for cyclic one, the first D0 and D1 and D2 and D3, you use the same circuit for all the bits. It means what? All the bits will face the same error. The error will be accumulated to become too huge. So, pipeline means what? For each cycle, you use different circuit. But you can see the circuit structure are exactly the same, right? Right? But what is the advantage you can get for such kind of pipeline deck? Ah, first of all, no error accumulation. Why? <laughs> because, because for all of them, they are different. If you do a good enough job, for example, oh, I got 2.1. You got maybe only 1.9. And for the next, 
1.95 for the next 2.05 okay if you do a good job then all the errors will be independent of each other I mean uncorrelated so some is positive some is negative some is positive so it is more likely they can cancel each other got it and this is the reason why pipeline deck in accuracy is much better than cyclic one that's it that's your first advantage and how about second advantage <coughs> because <coughs> all those stages can operate in parallel in cyclic no in series the first bit the next bit okay the same cycle but right now each cycle use different circuit okay so everybody operate in parallel so the result look like this for yourself oh my d0 he is processed here my d1 process here my d2 process there and finally this is my output right but for the first d0 d1 d2 and this one is the same okay you can see for a a0 a1 a2 and how about b0 b1 b2 c0 c1 c2 you can see for each cycle you can generate one output got it got it each cycle you get one uh, for from the beginning no output at all but for the first output shows up since after each cycle you can generate one output okay but if you go back to cyclic deck oh sorry for that <laughs> sorry for that sorry for what you need n cycle to generate to generate one output got it because you reuse the overall circuit that is the price you need to pay your d0 your d1 your d2 after you finish all your bits to get your output then the next data can be processed okay i'm the first a a0 all the way to a n minus one after a process all the bits then b0 can get in that is the major problem the major difference here right you can see hey b0 don't need to wait until all the bits of a be processed no 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 after a0 is processed next time a1 right right now b0 can also be processed i don't need to wait in the past i need to wait a0 a0 a1 a2 all the way to a n minus one after every bit is processed then b0 b0 can get in got it but right now no in pipeline you don't need to wait so each cycle you can generate one output bingo all right but you need to be very careful for latency you still need to wait n cycles because this is my first my second my last bit okay from input to output the latency is still n cycle but the throughput is only one cycle got it so you need to be very careful the latency and the throughput they are not dependent on each other people will always think oh the more latency the longer you need to wait from input to output it means the less throughput no 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 this is a very good example for you okay got it even though you need to wait for a long time but the throughput is still one cycle one output got it yeah so don't be fooled and finally we have such kind of nine crystal rate versus oversampled deck oh this is real fantastic oversampled means what for your ADC, uh, the sampling rate, uh, you have some kind of sampling rate. But for your deck, you, you would like to play back, for example, my voice. From the beginning, the sampling rate, uh, maybe 
for CD. Okay, 44.1K hertz, blah, blah, blah. That is for ADC. But to play the voice back for DAC, we can have oversampling. Wow, it means what? <laughs> I can double the rate, or, or I can in increase the, <laughs> the DAC operation frequency. Yeah, much higher than the original ADC. What does it mean? What we would like to have to reduce the error? OK. Hopefully, through my teaching, you will get more, much better understanding than the others. This is what I can help. The blue line is from original ADC. OK. But why my deck would like to operate faster than the original one? OK, this is the original one. So, oh, OK, may, may, maybe you can think oh, the original signal just look like this. OK, sorry for that. Oh, I have a very important meeting, but allow me to finish this for you. OK, so after playing back your deck, the blue, the blue line is for real output. The red line is the real input. So the difference here, OK? That is the error signal. It will be filtered by your low pass filter, but, but, but you still face such kind of big piece of error signal. OK, so what is the difference between the original one? I mean, DEC operates at the same frequency with your ADC. That is the original th logic thinking, right? But nowadays, nobody do anything like this. We always have oversampled DEC. Hmm. You can see, the here is a sample for your original ADC. In between, we have something called interpolation. OK? So what is the final output with oversampled deck? You can see. Oh, like this one. So what is the error hmm. noise? What is the error? Right now, only small triangular, small triangular here, right? Right? So the original one, you have so huge error signal. But right now, it is reduced to be the small one, right? So after low pass filtering, I promise you, the noise will be substantially reduced. And according to SNR, since the noise after oversampling will be reduced, so your SNR will be increased. For what? You will get more enough, effective number of bits through such kind of oversampled deck operation. Got it? See? Fantastic. Your deck can operate at higher frequency than your ADC. Bingo. Did you think about that? If not, this is a very good idea to inspire you for your own future. Think differently. OK? Don't always follow the others. Oh, ADC, operate at this, uh, this frequency and blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. You can speed up operation. OK? And how to test it? A piece of cake, just do it by yourself. OK? And this is the end of deck. Next week, we can focus on ADC. Yeah. Uh, such kind of uh, simple papers. Read it by yourself. If you have any question, any problem, just contact me next week. OK? Yeah, to the end. <laughs>